But we were at the movie premiere. Uh, Chip Roy sat right next to me, and we were kind of joking with each other on a couple of things. And I said, dude, are you just tired of kicking ass at this point? And he goes, dude, I'm just getting started. And I was like, good, because there's going to be a lot of asses that need kicking. I mean, this thing is just getting dumber and dumber as we go. And, uh, of course, he he had something to say about this whole deal between uh, Kevin McCarthy and Joe Biden in this negotiation. Uh, play the clip. I personally think this was a complete and total sellout of everything that we accomplished in January, everything that we did in the first Limit Save and Grow Act, and everything we accomplished with HR2. You're right. I think it is a, I think it is a betrayal of the power-sharing arrangement we put in place that would protect the Republican Party to make sure we could advance the ball forward. We are not blind to the fact that we have to figure out how to get 218 votes. We understand that's hard. We had a process that was working. That process was completely abandoned last week. The deal was cut, and that was a betrayal of the agreement that we had reached in order to create something that we thought would work. That's what I'm getting at. So I'm going to try to fix that today. If I cannot, in the Rules Committee, when I go fight this in the Rules Committee, if I can't kill it, if we can't kill it on the floor tomorrow, then we're going to have to then regroup and figure out the whole leadership arrangement again. I cannot disagree. I cannot disagree. I think he's 100 percent. In fact, I'm going I'm to reach over here. I'm going to give Chip Roy the sissy award right there because he's got a <laughs> set. And he's got a set. There, that's uh, that's for Chip Roy right there. Oh my God, dude, uh, it's, it's insane. Uh, here's what uh, uh, Matt Gates had to say about this deal with McCarthy. Play it. What will the what will the Freedom Caucus do if the the, the people who are objecting to this bill get overridden? If the Republicans get overridden by a uh, a Republican speaker teaming up with Democrats to pass this bill? Again, I think the operative question there is whether or not the speaker can get to a majority of the majority. If, if a majority of Republicans are against a piece of legislation and you use Democrats to pass it, that would immediately be a black letter violation of the deal we had with McCarthy to allow his assent to the speakership, and it would likely trigger an immediate motion to vacate. I think Speaker McCarthy knows that. That's why he's working hard to make sure that he gets, you know, 120, 150, 160 votes, and that's why those those of us who are not supportive of the bill are trying to point out that many of the changes are cosmetic in nature and Joe Biden's administration is going to be able to waive uh, certain requirements and certain conditions that sound like great talking points, but that don't save the country from the ruin that the Biden administration is bringing us to. Guys, we're in trouble. I, listen, bottom line, when, you, when you're this many trillions of dollars in debt, I mean, it, you have the nations of the world who are already conspiring against you to make sure that you go into a financial, not just spiral, but an absolute collapse. And then you have you know, Democrats on on that are in this administration who do not care. I mean, they absolutely want... They want deficits. They want debts. They want, as parody AOC and real AOC say, they want to spend their way out of inflation. But they're doing it by just printing money. You can't continue with this. This is common sense. And now you have Kevin McCarthy, who is, as Chip Roy and Matt Gates have both stated, he's violating the whole, you know, the, the, the concessions that he made, that he agreed to. Uh, when they gave him the speakership. And, you know, again, did we really think Kevin McCarthy was going to last Is in terms of his sense of uh, keeping his word? Absolutely not. Because, again, we're dealing with the freaking uniparty, man. We're dealing with people who are who are just rhinos. They are not Republicans. They're not true conservatives. They don't have a backbone. We continue to bend over. I mean, that's why the Democrats always freaking win. They don't bend. They don't bend. They don't stop. They put their line in the freaking sand, and they don't they don't smear it out and draw it again whenever you encroach it. No, they they, they stay there. They're freaking immovable. And you know why? Because we have proven to them over and over again on the right side of the aisle, that we'll bend, that we'll break, that we'll capitulate every single freaking time to what they want. And this is exactly what's happening. So I believe what Chip Roy said, it's a sellout. It's a sellout. Kevin McCarthy has now violated his deal with House Republicans to get the speakership, and you're going to live with the results of it. You're going to live. This is politics. This is big government politics. Everywhere it goes, 
It's a blob that consumes everything it touches. It will eat you up. It will spit you out, and there will be nothing left. You're going to wake up, and there will be nothing left. There's nothing left of this country that we know of. I mean, my God, look at the values we've lost. There's no, there's no sense of justice anymore. There's no sense of law and order. Look at all the tyranny that I've always listed off to you, all the different things that we see. You can't even you can't listen. You, you want some free shit? Go to the store. Go to San Francisco. Go to Portland. Go, go to any big city. Go into Dallas, Texas. Go into Houston and just go into your local CVS, go into your pharmacy, pile up a bag of shit, stuff, you know, just don't go over $750 and walk out the door with it. You could do that because there's no sense of justice anymore. Do you think that they're going to have a sense of justice when it comes to your finances? No, they're, they've, they've already hidden their money. They've already laundered their stuff. They don't care about you anymore. They don't care about your well-being. They're keeping us distracted with a woke BS agenda, they're throwing different flags at us, different communities, different symbols of oppression, different victimizations, and, and all of this crap that we're out there talking about and arguing about and making our memes about and joking about laughing at and the stupid stuff they say on The View and the Uniparty is inside the Washington, D.C. Beltway screwing you and me. And you know what we do? We pay our taxes every year in order to fund it. It's ridiculous, the stuff that we've capitulated to. You talk about Kevin McCarthy giving in. Oh, my God, the stuff we've given in to. I love that. You know, I, I wish so bad that, you know, somebody else's idea. I wish so bad that I could make a T-shirt, you know, it, it put George Washington's face on there. You've seen the one where it says, you know, me and my homies would be stacking bodies by now. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite deals. I, I think that's 76 United or somebody. I don't know, but uh, God, I love that shirt. I, me and my homies would be stacking bodies by now. I mean— <laughs> We won our independence. We went from being colonies to the United States and declared independence from the world's global super superpower under King George III because, you know, 3% of our population said, hey, 2% of taxes is too much. We're not going to pay that. And now we're being taxed to death in order to fund what? This nonsense, this absolute bullshit we see in Washington, D.C.? Uh, but somebody's got to pay their salaries. Somebody has to set these guys up. I mean, the fact that the fact that you got a guy in the White House who can't even remember his name, and he's worth tens upon tens upon tens of million dollars. We have the evidence that's there that that not only that he cheated to get into that position, he wasn't elected, he was selected, he was placed, and not only that, all the money that that we see that they've gotten checks from China, checks from Ukraine, all these nefarious places around the world, and we're just what okay with it? We're just okay with it. I mean, my God, you, you know, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You, you know what was different then versus now? What was different then versus now? For instance, you know why they, you know why first century Christianity changed history forever? Because uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says they loved not their lives even unto death. They loved not their lives even unto death. You don't want to know why we were able to win our independence and fight a revolutionary war and, and just with guerrilla tactics take over that world super superpower? Because men were willing to die. We're not willing to die anymore. We're too freaking comfortable. But see, that's the thing. When you live in a godless society that doesn't believe there's anything after this one and there's no eternity and there's nothing to live for for eternity, there's nothing to sacrifice for in order to be rewarded after this life, then you believe this life is all there is, and therefore you're afraid to die. Now we have this fear of death, and that fear of death has become our God. And therefore, we're not going to stand up. Hell, we don't even want to have anybody looking. They don't. We don't want people auditing our taxes, much less, you know, uh, putting us in the gas chamber. We're scared of everything. We're scared of our own shadow. We've all become these damn victims. We want somebody to feel sorry for us. We want cradle to grave care. And, and you know what? We want to we, we want to prolong our life as long as we can. That's why we bow down and worship at the altar of big pharma and, and the, the medical tyranny that's out there. Oh my God, that's why they were streaming freaking COVID numbers and turned that into a religion of safetyism during the pandemic because they knew that we were scared to die. And they got control over us. You're not going to change anything because we're a bunch of wimps. We're a bunch of weaklings. We're not living for anything. They haven't touched anything precious enough in your life yet that you're willing to die for it. And that, my friend, is the problem.